Hey folks, it's Brian. Uh, I was able to get, well, two of my players. Uh, I ended up losing three uh, since our last game, mostly because one was in the UK and the other two were in New Zealand and Australia, and the time issues were causing problems for them. And then some of them had some schedule changes too, so they weren't able to hook back up anymore. So I was down to two. Uh, one of my previous players who had gotten back in touch with me um, was ready to go, so I thought he was going to show, but he didn't. Um, and then we've got a line on two or three more uh, folks who might be interested, so hopefully we can get the party built back up. So right now I'm just running with two guys. Um, and then I, I'm running like three NPCs for the party, and just got really complicated last night with with the mass combat that we had. <clears throat> so from last time, we the start of the fourth watch. Um, we stopped that, you know, roll initiative kind of thing because there's a, an encounter occurring. Um, so when we started the combat, okay, there's been a a cry out that we're being attacked, troops in contact, that kind of thing. And um, I allowed the uh, previous watches personnel to you know take off their helmet take off their body armor but they still had their limb armor on while they're you know setting up their bed rolls or whatever they're, they're doing get ready to go to bed right or go back to bed and so they had had limb armor on but that was it um and then i had everyone who was asleep roll a d6 to see how many rounds it would take them to get actually up and moving And uh, there was one on one round on, on, on after the first melee round, and then the rest of them were like on the there's like three of them on the fifth, and I didn't remember the other two. One of them actually got up prior to when he would have because he got attacked, uh, so he got up earlier. But um, as it turns out, there are these three zombies and nine skeletons that are are swarming the party. Uh, all of the zombies go to uh, Delegia, the uh, Hamakti swordswoman, and then all the skeletons kind of circled around uh, the healer and the female Pelorian. But it turns out that the Pelorians own the zombies and skeletons as part of the encounter. They're actually ogres, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Um, so, the uh, the Pelorian chick shot her bow at the healer, and the skeletons came in. Um, first round, the last set of uh, guards people came out and engaged the skeletons. The rest of the Pelorians came out to engage in various places. Um, next round, one of the other players was able to come out and got engaged with the um the skeletons and one of the polarians attacked the uh the hunter who was just sleeping in his bedroll kind of thing um hurt him pretty bad but didn't put him out and then um so next round he got up and so they had a fight going on there there's the skeleton zombies with the hamaka swords woman and she's got a great sword and so she was parrying the, the mauls the two-handed mauls from the zombies and uh, she's pretty deft with that thing. I let her go a couple rounds before she threw out her uh, Blade Sharp 4, which really started doing some decent stuff. Uh, because when she would parry the, uh, the mauls, whatever damage got through the mauls' hit points went on to the zombies. And so she was just starting to you know, nitpicking all the defensive things because she was parrying left and right. And then she was slowly whacking one down. Because <laughs> the zombies zombies have lots of hit Well, in, in RuneQuest, they have double hit points. Uh, except that two of these zombies were actually fairly weak. They just had uh, a normal range of, of hit points. You know, 10, 12-ish kind of thing. The other one had like 33. Skeletons don't have hit points at all. And so once you get past their armor, you, you essentially take out whatever location it is that you hit. It's the shield arm, the shield arm breaks, and the shield drops, sword arm, sword drops. 
head, chest, abdomen, they, they collapse, the legs, they just drop to the ground, right? And so there's a lot of that kind of stuff happening with the skeletons getting knocked to the ground, uh, getting an arm here or there uh, taken off, that kind of thing. Combat lasted a total of about eight rounds, um, and that took us almost the entire three hours. RuneQuest is very crunchy, actually crunchy, but part of the deal was that I was running you know, the three zombies, the nine skeletons, three of the NPCs, plus another couple of the NPCs because our we had three players drop out on us. They were, uh, one's in the UK and the two were in Australia and New Zealand and the time differential um, and schedule changes just made it difficult for them to continue to play. There was uh, an initial player that I had uh, recruited who had contacted me last week, so I thought he was going to be there, but he never showed. So I only had two players up, and I was playing everybody else. So it got really slow. A couple of things I could have done to speed up strike ranks, <clears throat> excuse me, for combat uh, with the skeletons and stuff. But hey, we muddled through it. Um, there were uh, some situations and reactions and combat rules that uh, we kind of talked through. One of them was that if you're engaged with somebody and you put them out, that essentially makes you disengaged because you're no longer engaged, well, assuming there's not somebody else engaging you. And therefore, you could move. And so I was a little hesitant at that at first because I've got this whole movement combat thing in my head. But eventually, I just acquiesced. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't really change that much. So there were no issues there. So a guy was able to keep moving around, uh, getting behind some of the skeletons, that kind of thing. No real issues there. Um, then there was the uh, reactions to injury kind of thing. I remember from RuneQuest 2 that when you went below zero in your limbs, that you were incapacitated, um, but you could heal yourself. That's if you go negative, your hit points in your limbs. That that's that point that happened. So there was some some squishiness that didn't go the way it should have. Um, and I, I try to advertise my game, my guys that hey, we're all learning the rules here, so we'll stop and go through the rules because we want to understand the game as we're playing it. Um, not that I couldn't just do rules off the fly because I could do that because I played RuneQuest for years, but I, I didn't want to. I wanted to play this and you know see how the rules work out before we start tweaking stuff. That was my intent. My first campaign was initially going to be three chapters, and then if they wanted to continue to play, we do a second campaign, or if they wanted to run in my world instead of somebody else running for us, you know, that kind of thing, that I would start throwing in, okay, let's talk about house rules and how you guys want to change things up. But oh, we're not there yet. Um, but turn, I was looking through the combat section in the, in the, the book. I couldn't find anything about reactions to injury. Because, you know, when you go below uh, hit points in a limb, it's useless. You can't use it, right? But if you go double, and that's where I, I missed it, when you go double those hit points, which is the maximum for limbs, um, but that's when you have this whole you're incapacitated deal. Um, things about chest, abdomen, and head, you're unconscious, you're going to be dying, um, that kind of thing. And then there's... Uh, if you do triple hit points in a location, instant death for the head, chest, and abdomen. Uh, mangled beyond repair kind of thing for limbs, you know, that kind of deal. Take special healing magic to take care of that kind of stuff. Couldn't find it. Found this morning in the game. What's it called? Game system. Yeah, the game system section. You've got damage. Yeah. Damage, death, and healing. Instead of in the combat section, it's in the game system section. Um, it was kind of interesting. But I found it, and that's where I realized, okay, it's double the hit points in the limb where you got the incapacitation. So, hey, so what? Figure that out eventually, right? There was an incident where one of the Polorians got uh, a slash against them and the slash damage which is a special attack with, with slashing weapons does extra damage but they also have this uh, incapacitation rule for that that if you roll your con minus the number of hit points you took times 5 on a percentile you have to roll that or less 
in order to not be incapacitated, which was kind of a new rule. I think it's supposed to help balance out the whole impale thing and having weapons stuck inside you and different things like that. But I actually like the whole impale is max damage plus roll damage and slash was just double roll damage twice kind of thing. But now both of them are, are double damage, so it's kind of, kind of weird. But first aid was a real issue we ran into, where in the first aid skill in the skill section, talks about doing first aid, it's a little confusing at whether or not you can heal a wound more than once. But in the first aid section of the damage, death, and healing, it specifically says a failed first aid roll means that no damage was healed. Good to go nor can a t an attempt at first aid be attempted on that particular wound again. And that was kind of our argument. Could you re, re, you know, re-bandage it kind of thing? This section, game system, definitely, no, you can't. One shot, that's it. And the first aid skill is kind of ambiguous. <laughs> yeah, and there's some shield rules in here, too, that, again... One section says one thing, another section says something a little bit different. In fact, with the uh, the, the shield deal, when you're doing the attack versus parry matrix, and you parry an attack, and damage from the attack gets through the shield, the matrix says it goes to an adjacent location, meaning you look at the shield chart, small shield is just the arm, medium shield is the arm, or next place, which is the chest. And then a large shield is, you know, arm, chest or abdomen, or chest or head, you know, that kind of thing, right? But there's a shield section later on that says that if it gets through your shield, it goes to the location rolled. And that's how I was playing it anyway. So that didn't really bother me. But when you got these conflicting rules or some ambiguous stuff and then some very specific or rules mentioned in different places, yeah, that, that kind of bothered me. But we muddled through all that pretty well. Um, there's some dodging that we did, lots of parrying going on left and right, some weapons getting damaged, um, no real shields got damaged, I don't think anybody got through a shield, um, except maybe against a skeleton, there might have been a couple of shield shots that got through, so they were broken down a little bit, but there were no, like, critical hits against a parry kind of thing, where you can just smash a shield or break a weapon, none of that happened, uh, so all in all, the combat itself was pretty uneventful, cracked down on the, the skeletons, Taking out the zombies. Um, two of the Polorians were actually disengaged the whole time. One was the pikeman doing a two hex jab. The other was with the bow. Um, at round five, when the new people came out, they took off. Uh, one of the Polorians got uh, legged out and was down, so the hunter just beat him up and killed him. Now the Polorian, the one I mentioned at the slash, she missed her con roll, so she went out. One, two, three, four. There's a fifth one. Oh, there are two pikemen. The other pikemen got killed, too. Um, when the players got hit in the leg pretty decently, he went down and had to get healed up. But otherwise, I mean, the skeletons really weren't doing much damage. Um, and they weren't hitting very often at all, either. Now, there was a time, a section in there, where I was rolling a bunch of specials that I fudged and made just regulars. Because that was after the the uh, sorcerer went down with the leg, leg thing. I didn't, I, you know... It's our first real combat. I didn't want to kill anybody outright. Although I got some PCs that are no more PCs, and one was a healer. She's dead. Uh, Fron, the uh, the farmer guy, I could have killed him off, but I left him there because he was he was cannon fodder, keeping skeletons off of real players, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but I've got some more opportunities to get rid of those guys. Okay, so nearly our entire three hours was built up doing this one session of combat. Um, so everybody, they do some healing. They did salvage the heal. They did first aid on uh, two of uh, the Polorians. You know, to question, what's going on? What are you doing with these, you know, these zombies and skeletons yours? Because one of the players actually asked that, you know, does it look like the zombies and skeletons were summoned by the Polorians? I said, well, it could look that way because the attacks are happening together. But they don't really know enough about summoning skeletons and zombies to be able to determine, you know, that kind of thing happening. None of them are death worshippers. Well, technically, <laughs> the, the Hamaki are death worshippers. 
but they don't deal with, with undead. <laughs> um, and so I kind of threw him for a, a loop, and I kind of smoothed out. You just can't tell. It sure looks that way. All of them are fighting you, right? So, um, so I took two of them, captured them, tied them up, gagged them, started to question them, did some intimidation on them, didn't work. Um, and then they started to ask some questions, and uh, the, the female uh, Polorian started just jabbing and screaming and, and you know, being violent at them. And so I asked him, okay, do you ungag her? And he said, okay, yeah, I'll ungag her. So they ungag her. <clears throat> it turns out these guys are ogres. And then ogres in uh, RuneQuest are very human looking. They're very strong. But they also got, you know, you know, goblin type teeth. You know, lots of fangs and vicious teeth because they eat people. Uh, they're, they're chaos creatures. None of these guys had chaotic features, though. One, one was close, but they only have a 5% chance of having a chaotic feature. One of them rolled an 8, the rest were all in like 30, 40s or higher. Um, and so once it became obvious these guys were were, were ogres, the two homages said, just kill them. Just kill them now. And one of the players actually has a passion, hate chaos. And he says the same thing. No, let's just dispatch them now. They're not good for anything. They're not going to help us out. Nothing's good going to occur from this. Just kill them now. Because one of the players was saying, you know, I'm PC. I can be independently thinking. You know, I don't have to necessarily kill all these things. And he doesn't. Um, but I tried to help convey to the point that we don't necessarily have good and evil in the world. You know, that all depends upon your viewpoint, right? But there's chaos and everybody else. Everybody must just chaotic things need to be destroyed. Period. And so I, I talked to him during one of the little break sessions about that. So hopefully that helped get some of the, the RuneQuest flavor out into there. That Yeah, you could choose to not kill these chaotic creatures, but everybody would not trust you. <laughs> Let's question a, um, a lunar. If you're a lunar, lunarite, lunari, lunar, well, from the lunar empire, because they invite, they, they use chaos in their, their empire. The, the chaos bat and other things, they're just, you know, but that's another reason why we all hate the Lunars. So, uh, they dispatch them. They pack up camp. They start heading back along the, the Dwarf Ridge Hills there, following uh, the pathish that they saw from uh, the cattle raid. The next day, they get encountered by trolls. Uh, up in front, they can see a, a dark troll and two great trolls. These two great trolls were armored up. Oh, the dark troll was too. Um, and one of them calls out, oh, and the, one, the dark troll in the middle calls out in halting, you know, trade talk that my priestess wishes to speak with you. And so they have a little discussion. Uh, we cannot allow you to have weapons in her presence. We will allow us to confiscate them. And there was some discussion on honorifics and that kind of thing. And one of the players asked, are the rules of hospitality in play? And the Troll says, yes, you are under the uh, protection of hospitality while you were with us. So they give up the weapons, and there were actually six other dark trolls there, and then there were like a dozen trolking out in, in the eaves uh, with slings. So they go to the, the into the their cave <coughs> complex. They go through some dwindy caves, get to a cavernous area. Uh, they sit them down. There's like one torch in the back so they can see a little bit. And she comes out and asks what they're doing in her clan's lands. And so some discussion back and forth about, okay, there was this raid that happened at Johnstown, and um, my sister-in-law was kidnapped. We think they may have been tied together. We're just trying to find her and figure out what happened. So she calls up one of her dark trolls and asks him, hey, you did a raid recently, didn't you? Where Was that to Johnstown? And he, he starts to tell his story about how he was addressed by uh, this dark troll uh, nightclub. I didn't even know it was nightclub until after I said it out loud. Um, uh, who has a holding northeast of here had, had uh, come to him and asked him um, if he'd be interested in doing a raid. He knew it was, you know, speaking of dark season, most of the cattle are, are sold, but their guard will be down, and there'll be a handful of cattle there to take. And so he coordinated for the date and time and all that kind of stuff uh, with this dark troll. And, and that's, that was the raid. And he does reveal that after the raid was over and they were headed back towards uh, their lands, 
that this troll nightclub did show up with a uh, prisoner, a human female. Perhaps she's the one you're looking for. Um, so the party, you know, gives their thanks, actually offer uh, a small parting token of thanks. And um, then they're escorted out, given their weapons back, and they take off. Uh, no more encounters that day. They get to where the, the track split. They head back the way they had been before, up the uh, the deer path kind of thing into the into the hills. And at that point, <clears throat> there there's an encounter. So we ended up stopping at that point. So all in all, it was a three hour session, which was pretty good. Most of it taken up with that combat. Um, and unfortunately, it was just two players. But in all in all, um, I thought it was fairly successful. Learned a few things myself. Hopefully, I was able to convey a few of the rule corrections uh, to the party because they're going to check this out. Uh, also, if you're interested, um, I'll link in the description below uh, the, the live play. Unfortunately, there's some kind of a sound issue where my voice gets repeated somewhere. So you hear an echo and then my voice actually coming out. It was really kind of weird. I've had some sound issues just with myself and my headset and recording with my screen capture, but this was something else. I don't know if uh, maybe I need to have my other guys wear headphones so that they don't have speakers speaking back into microphones or something. I don't know. We'll talk about it. Anyway, happy gaming.